Hi, I'm Miles Duniga from Fastball, and I'm going to tell you a crazy tour story. Um, one time we went to play some guy's farm or something. He was, he was this rich kid who would have this festival, quote unquote. But really what it was, was he wanted to get drunk with people that were on the radio and, and have some sort of thing outside and have all these bands. And he hired us to come play. And this is, I sad to confess, my most unprofessional moment as an entertainer. Uh, we arrived, we flew in, he picked us up in, in Memphis. But we were going somewhere, you know, a, a hundred miles away or something, I forget. And, there, and I, it's, all I know is a road manager told me, this guy likes to party with rock stars. That's what he said. I've never considered myself like a rock star. But I didn't want to let him down. I figured, well, he's paying us a lot of money. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him what the experience I think he's looking for. So the first thing I said was, can we go to like a liquor store, or like a wine store, nice wine store, so that we can get some, some, some lubricants for the show? And he said, sure, let's go. And we, he picked us up in a limousine, right? So, so we, go, we go to this liquor store, and we're buying tequila and everything, and I start just pulling down $100 bottles of wine off the shelf just to see. Guy didn't bat an eye. We ran up like a thousand dollar tab at, at the liquor store. Then we go off to the hotel. We're in this tiny little town where the fine dining is a, the, you know, the catfish parlor. You know, it's just a little, a little. Um, so we had a, he had the limo drop, drop us off there. And I've never felt like such a douchebag coming out of the limousine into this little, you know, this very, very uh, kind of everyday restaurant. That's, I would never do that, but you know, whatever. That was our transportation. We open a couple bottles of wine, we start to eat the food. Then we get to his house, which is out in the sticks on some farm. And he's got his house and then the stage is there, right? And so we're gonna do the show. I don't know what time we were supposed to go on, but the whole event was so disorganized that we ran probably two to three hours late. During this time, I was making myself margaritas with, with, with the Cabo Wabo tequila that I'd purchased, or he'd purchased rather. And uh, our guitar player, who was an auxiliary guy who's great, was a lot younger than me, by, by you know, like a decade. It's, it says, I think you should slow down. This kid, partied his ass off. He was hospitalized twice while he was on tour with us. I'm not making this up. So for him to tell me to slow down certainly made me wonder. Like, wow, he's telling me to slow down and he gets bombed all the time. I was like, maybe I've had too many, but I, I felt fine. I picked up the Cabo Waba to make myself another drink and it was empty. And I was like, holy shit, did we? Did me and him finish the entire bottle of tequila on top of the wine? I still felt okay. I didn't feel shit-faced or anything. I really had to take a leak. So I went off in search of a, a bathroom. I opened the door and instead I see a bedroom with a bed. And I went, oh yeah. Just a little lay down. Just hit the reset button. Just a little nap, nappy nap and I'll be good as gold and we'll do the show. <laughs> I lay down and just promptly pass right out and I'm like dead to the world. And all of a sudden, I feel this being shaken awake by our drummer and he goes, hey, hey, let's go, it's time to go. And I go, thank God that's over. Let's go to the hotel. He goes, no, no, time to play the gig. And I said, you're fucking kidding me. We haven't played the show yet? And he goes, no, no, we haven't played it yet. I said, yeah, we have, we must have played it. He goes, no, we haven't played it yet. I sit up in the bed and the room is doing one of these. Like the, the, the whole room is starting to spin. You know, I felt like I was 12. I, you know, this stuff didn't happen to me anymore, but it was happening now. And uh, I didn't know what to do. And you know, my bandmates basically just shoved me out on stage. No, no sympathy, no like, well, let's give him, you know, we already run three hours late. What does it matter? You know, another 20 minutes to get, nope, throw him out, shove me out on stage. I was so legless, I could, I could hardly stand. I, I sat on the drum riser and played all the songs I didn't have to sing. I was sitting on the drum riser. 
if I tried to tip my pedal, I, it suddenly turned into like yoga. You know, I was suddenly downward facing dog. And, I, um, and the funniest part is, by the end of the set, I started to sober up. And I was really enjoying the sound of my guitar. So I was taking these like 20 minute solos on these two minute songs. And our, our road manager just, we're good. We, we, we played 90 minutes. Let's go. And I was like, and anyhow, uh, the next day was the best part. I woke up, for, I woke up just like, as you might imagine, feeling like totally complete dog shit. And we had to fly here to Chicago. We had to come play Chicago. But on the way, we hadn't been paid yet. And we had to go back to this guy's house and get the money. We went all the way out there and he opened the door and he had a black <laughs> Because his show was so disorganized, ran so late, he had promised these, his friends that they could play after us and there'd be a ton of people. But the whole thing was so disorganized, they went on at like four in the morning to nobody. And, and I, one of the people in the band hit him in the face. That's my crazy tour story. Uh, you know, it, it may not be on the level of Motley Crue, but you know, that's it. <laughs>